She spent five years in Australia before um, coming to Zurich, which was a very good choice, because you can tell I'm Australian. Uh, and she loves, she has a passion for international cooking and she loves the outdoors and everything to do with it. So I'd like to introduce you to Hannah Coco with Animal Sex. More diverse than you think. Okay, so I am quite often professionally in situations where I have to depict humans as members of their own species. And then I have to think what kind of picture do I choose to uh, show that, and this is maybe sort of as neutral as you can get. But then of course it's a bit boring because it doesn't really show the diversity that we have in our species. Um, so, the uh, picture that I could equally well show, um, are, are, is it auto advancing? I hope should so. Be. Should should be. Be. Um, okay. Yep. The picture that I could show is also something like this. So, this is a bunch of Brazilian men. Um, but then, this again is a little bit boring uh, because, you know, it's only men and it's showing certain kind of ideas about the. Um, it's changing. Uh, it's changing now. Okay, um, about what goes on in maybe men's heads when they look at women. Uh, here you can see a um, sort of longing gaze and, and in the shadow you can see maybe some ideas of what might be happening um, inside these people's heads when they're thinking about each other. Uh, but then of course we know that it's not just men who desire women. There's all kinds of things uh, that can happen in human societies. You're probably more familiar with two of these pictures than the third one. Uh, that's the Papua New Guinea tribe where young men have to perform sexual services to older guys for about seven years before they are allowed to approach girls. Um, well, that, you know, that's kind of like um, spectacular, but at the same time I could say that, well, as a biologist I must say that's a bit boring. Uh, if we think about what kind of things can go on outside the human realm, uh, there's all sorts of things that uh, happen. So on the left here you can see coral spawning uh, with these gametes trying to find each other in the open ocean. On the right it looks very similar but that's ants swarming uh, with lots of males and a few queens uh, maybe finding each other up in the air. And this is um, an insect uh, that is also uh, doing an ant-like thing which is to be able to produce sons without any input from any father. Uh, so males never have a father uh, which is handy for the mothers because they, if they're alone, they can just make a son, mate with him, then eat him up and uh, <laughs> produce daughters. Shrimps can do uh, sex changing into a hermaphrodite. Every shrimp of this species starts its life as a male, then turns into a hermaphrodite. But how quickly uh, the shrimp wants to do that depends on whether he is alone, in which case he's quite fast of turning into having a female function as well. Uh, but if he's with other hermaphrodites, having fun with them uh, pays off for a lot longer. <laughs> then we have gobies. Um, they can live in pairs, but if they happen to be of the same sex, they rather change sex so to become a heterosexual couple than do this dangerous reef a few meters uh, to another uh, couple uh, on the reef. <laughs> or you can be something like this, a sessile marine organism, <coughs> Uh, that doesn't actually choose its sex until it stops its larval floating around in the ocean, it drops on the seafloor, and uh, only then it starts deciding uh, when, whether it has landed, this is the larva, um, if it has landed next to a lot of females, it becomes a male, if it has landed next to a lot of males, it becomes a female. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> or it can be something like this, on the left you see a female barnacle, and these tiny little things that are enlarged on the right, uh, that's not a body part of a male, that's the entire male. Um, so sometimes you get these tiny little dwarf males that very handily serve as uh, sperm suppliers on the female. And this is my favorite example of all of them, a little marine worm where the bigger individual often becomes the female. That makes a lot of sense because if you're big, then a lot of eggs can fit inside you. Uh, we'll see the eggs in a moment. Um, so, uh, <laughs> This, of course, there's one problem with this strategy of becoming a female if you're bigger, which, which is that the male saves all the energy. He doesn't have to produce the eggs. So he actually has a higher growth rate. So eventually what happens is that he's bigger than his wife. Um, and then what do you do then? Well, of course, 
the solution is that both of you change sex. Oh, uh, that happens here. <laughs> um, so now, the bigger one is again the female. Uh, that's super practical because now, again, you can produce an even larger uh, number of eggs, which we'll see here. Um, and then again, of course, now the individual who is now on the left is growing faster and so on. And the cycle goes on until death then parts. The world record of doing this kind of thing, changing whenever things are needed, is probably by a strain of paramecium, uh, where in daylight it's one mating type, and if you didn't meet anybody then, uh, then it just switches at night to another one. Um, so is, is there anything that you don't find outside human beings, and I was thinking about this, and I think my answer is condoms. 